Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to save your tools and an inventory system using data stores in Roblox Studio. So, this tutorial is going to be based in part off of the advanced data store tutorial I did a while ago. It uses the same script and these parts are just the parts that we will be expanding on. So this uses the same data saving system, just allows tools to be saved as well. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe. Let's get started. So I am here in my advanced data store test world real quick. And before we get into the scripting of our project, I first want to demonstrate how a tool works, where it goes, and what it does in the Explorer. So I'm going to make a new tool and name this Test Tool. And I'm going to add a part to it named Handle. This is just for testing. You guys can use whatever tools you want for this sort of thing. So I have my tool. I can equip it. Here you go. But in the background, if I go to my player right here, you can see that in its unequipped state, a tool is in the backpack. But when I equip it, my tool goes to my player character. So this is going to be important when we check for tools and do things of that sort. So now that we know how to how tools work, we can start with the scripting but before we do that we first need to go into service storage create a folder name this folder tools and this will hold all the tools that you will give to players whether by unlocks by buying it whatever you guys can do whatever you want with that but we need a folder with all the tools in it so we can eventually save it so now we can start scripting. Let's go into our player handler module script located in server storage. Go to the very top and define our tools folder. There we go. This will be equal to game.server storage wait for child tools. There we go. And what we want to do with this module, I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. And the way we're going to do that is by making a function to create a tool. And you may be asking, why can't I just create a tool in any of my scripts normally by like cloning the tool from server storage? And the reason is, is this will allow this function to handle everything that we need to create the tool. So it adds a layer of abstraction, which basically means we can change this function and all scripts using the function won't have to change whatsoever. And this allows us to do stuff when we create the tool, like save it into our player's session data and maybe require a module with it. I did that in one of my games once. So just, it's always a good idea to put any crucial functionality, like cloning a tool and parenting it to the player, into a specific function so you can change any of the functionality in the future. But let's save this tool or name this function, I should say, create tool. And it's going to take in the player and the name of the tool. There we go. And also notice how up here we have the inventory table that is stored by default in our data model for our session data for our player. And this will be where we will store all of the names of the tools that each player owns so we can load them later. So now let's get to it. So I'm first going to define the player user ID just for the session data stuff. So it'll be equal to player.user ID. And now this is going to be a very long if statement, just bear with me. So we're gonna first check if the player, like if there's no tool, like no duplicate tool in our player backpack. So we're gonna do if not player dot backpack find first child of name like the tool name that we send it and then we're also going to check if there's a player dot character so notice this line we're checking if there's a player character so if the player's dead you will not be able to create a tool in their inventory which is sort of a limitation but 
the reason we're doing that is for this next line, which is be player dot character find first child name. Let's actually put a not here. So the reason we're doing this, let me zoom in real quick, is because we want to make sure, as I showed you before, that the backpack is clear of the tool, and so is the player character. And now that we know that, we can create the tool. So let's define local tool will be equal to tools folder that we defined above. Find first child name. And then we're going to clone it. And a clone just clones it. But it doesn't really have any parents. And it can't really do anything. So we're going to parent our tool to the player dot backpack. There we go. So now we're going to check if there's no like save for our tool. And we're going to add it to like the saves if it's not there. So we're going to check if not table dot find. And above this we're going to define local player session data which will be equal to session data player user id so we're putting notice the brackets here so it passes this as like a string key so now we're going to check in the table dot find player session data dot inventory and we're going to check for the value of our name so what this does is it basically runs through our the inventory of the player and checks for their tool. If it's not there, then we can add it. So this if statement is meant because we can use this create tool function when the player loads in or when we want to give a new tool to the player. So that's why we have to add this because we don't want to give the player an extra tool every time they load in. And now let's just finish it off with a table.insert player session data dot inventory and the name of the tool there we go so this will add our tool to the player inventory so that is our create tool function done so now we can load the tools using another function that i will make so let's define this function player handler dot load tools so this can be used either when the player loads into the game or when the player dies because when a player dies their backpack gets reset and we will add that functionality to load the tools when the player dies a little bit later so this is a pretty simple deal we can just define our player user id once again and then we can run through all of the tools for i tool name in pairs session data player user id spelled that wrong there we go player user id dot inventory do so this is going to be a bunch of strings that are the names of the tools so all we need to do for this is just call player handler create tool and we will send in our player and the tool name so this will do is this will go through all of the inventory of our player and just give them all the tools that they own that are part of their session data inventory list that we insert up here so this is all of the functionality functions done so now we can go to the top of our script to this area right here and this is the area where we initially check for our success and data, and we set our session data, player user ID, to our data, and whatever. So what we want to do here is, below all of this, we want to call player handler dot, spelled that wrong, handler dot load tools, and just give our player right here. So this will be the initial load for our player, because for some reason, I guess the data store causes it, player.characteradded does not fire initially. But now we can go and say player.characteradded 
connect function and do the same exact thing player handler dot load tools so this will do is every time the player dies it will load their tools which is absolutely what we want so now let's go into our script which I actually already have open it's in server script service all we have here is the player handler and a player added event so I'm gonna wait let's say three seconds and I'm going to say player handler dot create tool I'm gonna send to the player and test tool so this is just a test you guys don't have to do this but let's run it anyway so I load in wait a few seconds here's our test tool just to show you if I die tool should come back to me characters added tool comes back exactly what we want so now I stop the game and I can go back into my script and comment this out so it should not give me a tool but if I load in again you will see boom there we go here we have our tool that should not be there because we did not tell it to be there in either starter pack or this like artificial way of adding a tool it's there because we loaded the tool that our players have and if you just want a little bit more transparency on this sort of thing you can print the tool name of course just to see what tools are in our player inventory so you can see test tools in my inventory and if i were to like duplicate all the tools and like add a bunch of them it would still work we can actually do that real quick so i'm gonna go duplicate my test tool like twice and name it just name it test and then maybe tool there we go so now i can just do the same thing it's just extra just to show you the system actually functions properly we can just test put tool so you should wait three seconds and you may be like well i'm trying to add a tool twice and since we, our function accounts for that it works out fine and we never add two of the same tools which is exactly what we want to do your game in your game you may want to add two of the same tools so i'm confident that you can just edit my code but in all of my games i always like having unique tools but now we can comment this out once again play our game and our tool should load oh the test tool loads. so just a slight problem sometimes in studio and trust me this is only in studio your data stores will not save but most of the time it does and so here you go it actually loaded this time luckily and all the tools loaded in so that's great so i hope you guys enjoyed this video it's a very necessary skill to learn when making roblox games that use tools and if you did enjoy the video make sure to like and subscribe Comment any questions and more video suggestions down below, and I will make sure to link all of my code in the description as well as the past video for the advanced data store. So, I hope you guys have a nice day, and goodbye.